You're welcome to this week's episode on Real Gist with Moonbeam. On today's gist, I'll be talking on money and marriage. This topic is divided into two parts. I'll be dealing with the first part today, while the second part comes up next episode. Money is the number one issue married couple fight about. It is the second leading cause of divorce, infidelity behind. When we talk of money in any kind of marriage, we tend to, we are bound to find frustration and tension. No matter how much you love your spouse, trying to merge your lives with his or her money can be a bumpy ride. After all, you're both coming from different life experiences. The way you perceived and internalized these experiences was probably different. That's why you two have two different views on money. So, give each other's grace and use these steps to build a bridge. First, have a joint account. Some couples believe that to avoid um, money arguments in the family is by having separate checking accounts. His paycheck goes into one account, while hers goes into another. Bills are paid separately. No harm, no foul, right? Wrong. This is the foundation for the major problems with your money and marriage. But you guys' marriage is a partnership, right? So it's no longer his or her money. When you got married, either in the court of law, church or mosque, the officials said to become one. Separating the money and splitting the bills is a bad idea that leads to more money and relationship problems down the road. Do not keep your money in separate accounts. Bring it together, put it together and see it as a whole. Secondly, discuss each other's life choices. Discuss your life choices. Let's say you are content, you know, shopping at Goodwill whenever you want to update your wardrobe, but your spouse loves buying name branded items and at full price. If you have an income that cannot support expensive tests, that's going to be a problem in the family. This is the reason why you need to discuss each other's lifestyle together. There are this set of people that I bought this dress, 100,000 at that mall gives joy. It builds their confidence and, and esteem. So if you have such person, you know what it is. But I also want you to remember that time back then when you were in your parents' house or you were living alone as a working class lady or as a successful young guy, remember that the children wasn't there. The school fees was not there. The buying of diapers, the buying of baby food. Some of the expenses that, that, is, that, is, that is on you now wasn't there. Marriage is a compromise. If you have such spouse, you can kindly use an outlet mall. Use an open market where you can still buy that branded item of 100000 uh, in, in a mall. You can still get it for 30000 50000 in an open market. Go to a place where you can get it at affordable prices. Finally, recognize each other's difference in personality. It's very important. Everyone's money mindset is different and it attracts the opposite. Chances are one of you likes working with number that's the net, while the other wouldn't want to be tied down with whatever the, the number shows, the free spirit. And simple explanation, 
one of you likes to save you like to work and save sometimes you are even stingy to buy ice cream for yourself while your 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 spouse is inclined to spend without minding or caring whatever so while personal differences cause some marital issues it isn't the root cause of your money and marital issues the source of the problem is when one of you neglects the other's impute or when one of you bows out of handling the finances altogether listen up you the financial net do not keep uh, the money details all to yourself and stop using your knowledge to boss around your free spirit spouse that the guy who doesn't have a job right now doesn't mean you should boss him around doesn't mean you should keep the money out of uh, uh, out that, that that your wife is a housewife full housewife at the moment she's not any doesn't mean she shouldn't be, be included in what is happening. If you are the, the carefree spouse, look, stop nodding your head and accepting whatever that, that, that is being said. Don't stop saying, oh, that is great. Vote in the family's budget. Contribute. Darling, this is not good for the children. At this season, this is what is best for the house. Criticize and encourage. You two, you both, you guys are a team, right? So, work together as a team. Use each other's personal differences to build a stronger and united team. Thank you for watching this episode. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and share. Keep watching while I bring you the second part next week. Bye.